Hi guys, welcome to Kodesa's Mathematics class. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video. And also hit the notification button so you get to know when new video have been uploaded on the channel. Alright, today we'll be talking about limits. What am I going to be covering on that limit? I'm going to be covering some basic principles on that limit today, like how to solve questions on limits. I'll be talking about some special limits and I'll be talking about some theorems on limits. So just follow me as I all right. Um, so the first one we need to know is that limits are always represented in this way. Let's say x tending to a of um, 5x equals to 6. Now, if I have a question like this, if I have a particular question like this, this simply means the limit of 5x as x approaches a is equals to what? 6. That is, as my x is approaching a, my answer will give you what? 6. Not really that if I put this here, it is 6. Just that as this thing, as x is tending to a, where a is any number. Do we get that now? All right. So let's move into um, another thing. We have what we call the left limit and the right limit. The left limit, if you, when you have x tending to, let's say, a minus, you call this one the left limit. And let's say you have limit of a um, from x, x tending to a plus, you call this one the what? The positive limit. I mean, the left and um, right hand side limit, rather. Okay, so let's go on to some basic theorems of limits. So let's run through some basic theorems on limits. Okay. So if I have limits, so let's see, I have limit, the first one, if I have limit f of x as x tends to a plus limit, limit g of x, g of x as x tends to a. Now, if their limits are the same, that is what they are tending to are the same. So let's say plus or minus. Let's use this plus or minus. So either plus or minus. This law is applicable. So what do you do? You pick one limit as x tends to, uh, to a, and then you add or subtract what you have there. You add or subtract it. So g of x. You still get the same answer so that's the first theorem under that then the second one is that if you have the limit of a constant and f of x it is the same thing as x tends to a it is the same thing as saying the constant multiplied by the word by the limit of the f of what f of x as your x tends towards a so that's the second one under that then the third one is that if you have the limit of a constant as x tends to a, the limit of a constant will give you what? That constant without any change of going to it. All right. The same thing goes to division. If you have the limit of limit as x tends to a, of f of x over g of x it is the same as saying the limit of f of x as x tends to a over the limit of g of x as x tends to a. Did we get that? All right, so okay, this is number four. This is the fourth one. The number five that we need to look into is that if you have the limit multiplication if you have the limit if you have the limit of um, as x tends to what to a of g let's say f first of f of x g of x it is the same as saying the limit as x tends to a of f of x multiply by the limit as s tends to a 
of g of x they will get that now so this is also applicable to that particular question yeah and also under this division lest i forget you must note that this is only possible if g of x if g of x is not equal to zero because immediately your g of x is zero then this limit will be undefined all right so let's see some examples on that limit let's see some solve example using some of this theory on limits okay so let's say i have a question um, so let's say i have a question limit as x tends to one of five of x plus limit as x tends to one of seven x squared now you can see that this is like the first theorem this is more like the first theorem and we will we'll be able to see from here that the limits are the same so i can always say limits as x tends towards one and i say what five of x plus what seven x squared i mean okay let me use this one as seven x not seven x squared let's use it as seven x and that will be what limit as x tends to what one of what 12 x right so now put your limits that be what 12 times 1 and that's what 12 now look at you can also do it this way if you put one in your limits that be what 5 1 plus if you put this here that be what 7 1 and 5 times 1 is 5 7 plus 1 is what is 7 and that's what 12 so you can see that if you apply the law or you do it in a direct method you still get the same answers do we understand that all right so let's see another example under this so let's say i have limit as x tends to 2 of 5x 7x Now, you can see that this one is like the fourth one, which is the multiplication theorem. So, I can also apply it to the limit as x tends to, what, to 2 of 5x multiplied by limit as x tends to 2 of 7x. And that will be, since it is straight, so put the limit here, that will be 5 times 2 multiply by what 7 times what 2 and that's 10 multiply by what 14 and that's what 140 now you can also do it directly from here if you are doing it directly that will be limit as x tends to what to 2 5 times 7 is what is 35 x times x is what x squared and then if you put your limit directly that will be um, 35 2 squared, right? And that's what 35 times what 4. And 35 times 4 will give us what 140. Do we get that now? So you can see that the application of the theorems will give you the correct answer. So you can go ahead and check, um, use the same example to do for division and um, also for subtraction all right so let's see um some special limits let's see questions on special limits before we wrap up on today's teaching so we want to see few special limits we need to be familiar with all right okay so the first special limit we need to know the first special limit special limits all right the first one we need to know is the limit as x tends to zero of sine 
x over x will give you what? 1. So, as your x tends to 0, your sine x over x will give you 1. It is a special limit, but there are not so much solution you need. You just need to know that this is a special limit, and this is the correct answer whenever you have a question like this. And then the second one, the second one is that the limit as x tends to what? To 0 of 1 minus what? Cos x over x will give you 1. So you have to be familiar with this particular two. You have to be familiar with this particular two. This sine x over x, when the limit is 0, it will give you 1. And the limit of sine of 1 minus cos x over x will give you 0 rather. Sorry, not 1. 0. It will give you 0. Alright. Okay, the third one. The third one is the limit as x tends to infinity as x tends to infinity of 1 plus 1 over x all raised to power ok, let me see that the limit of as x tends to infinity of 1 plus 1 over x as x um, ok, with x to power x we give you exponential so, the first is sine x over x, we give you 1. The second is 1 minus cos x over x, we give you 0. And the third one is our, the limit of x tending to infinity, always power x, we give you what? Um, exponential. So, this sign means exponential. If you use a calculator, you will see exponential also there. And then the fourth one. The fourth one also says that the limit, the limit as x tends to zero, as x tends to zero, of one plus x plus by one over x will also give us exponential. So you can see that these two are related. So if I have one plus x plus by one over x, it is sigma mode exponential but now the limit is what as our x approaches what zero but here it is as our x approaches what infinity all right the fifth one the fifth one is the limit as x approaches infinity as x approaches okay i've done for infinity that's for the next one is for zero as x approaches zero of exponential x minus x over so exponential x minus z minus one exponential x minus one over x will give us exponential i'm sorry it will give us okay exponential x x that will give us one that will give us one then the last one that's that be number six. That's the limit as x tends towards zero of x minus one over in x we also give us what one. So we have to be familiar with all these special limits. You have to be familiar with the special limits. All right. So let's see few examples on uh, limits generally. So let's see few examples on limits generally before we wrap up today's class. Okay. All right. So if I have a question like limit as x tends to 0 of x squared plus 7x over 2 over x rather over x i want to solve this particular example now you look at it if you see that if you put your x directly here you will automatically be getting an undefined equation because if your x is 0 here all these things will become what undefined so what do you do 
you have to first simplify the numerator. You have to simplify the what? The numerator. And that number was the limit as x tends to what? Zero. If what is common between these two? That's what? X. X is common. Then it will give me what? X plus what? Seven. Over what? X. And you can see that your X will cancel out X. So you will let it what? Limit as X tends to what? Zero of x plus what seven and now anywhere you now see x put zero that will be zero plus seven and that means your answer is not seven. Do you get that now? So the first thing you have to do is you have to first simplify and now you can also do it with a shorter method which I'll be talking about in my next video. I'll be explaining on the short method of how you can do limit generally. In my next video all right so let's see one more example on this before we wrap up so let's say i have a question limit as x tends to limit as x tends to one as x tends to one over x squared minus 3x plus 2 over x squared minus 4x Plus three, all right. So as x tends to one, we want to check what the limit will be. Now the same thing I said, you have to first simplify the two stuff and the numerator. You have to simplify the numerator, and you also have to simplify the denominator. Now to make your work much more easier, you have to apply the two equations are quadratic equation. So, what will be their factor? So, let's try that out. So, this can also be x squared minus 2x minus x plus 2 using your quadratic equation. And this can be x squared minus x squared minus 3x minus x plus 3. Are we? Yeah, that was TV. Because from here, I have x squared minus 4x plus 3. If you multiply this together, it will give us 3x, and then this, it will give us minus 4x. So, two numbers you multiply together that will give you x, and when you subtract them, it will give you, when you add them, it will give you minus 4. The number is minus 3 times minus 1. Minus 3 times minus 1 will give you 3, and minus 3 minus 1 will give you what? 4. The same thing with this. If you multiply this and this together, it will give you 2. If you multiply this and this together, it should give you 2. And if you add them, it should give you minus 3. So that's how I'm able to get um, this particular statement we have here. Alright, so let's continue on that. Okay, so that will now be limit as x tends towards 1 over, you can now take these ones together, x minus 2, that is x is common, let's do this way, x is common, it will remain x minus 2, then minus what, 1 is common, it will remain what, x minus what, 2, then the same thing here, x is common, it will remain what? x minus 3. Then minus 1 is common. It will remain what? x minus 3. Okay. Alright. So that will now be the limit as your x tends to what? 1. Of x minus 1. x minus what? 2. All over what? x minus 1. x minus what? 3. And that was cancel. Cancel. So now put your limit which is as x tends to what? 1 of x minus 2 over x minus 3. And that now goes 1 minus 2 over 1 minus 3. And that's minus 1 over minus 2. And that's what 1 over 2. So you can see the process how to go through to get the same answer. So if you want to solve 
questions on limit. This is a process you have to go through. So in my next video, I'll be talking about the shortcuts of solving questions on limit. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share this video. Thank you.